If you're looking for an absolutely over-the-top, brutally intense, unbelievably combat-focused, zombie-killing fun time, then make sure to check out Dead Island 2 over on the Epic Game Store or using my link in the description below. The game is honestly jam-packed with detail and has a pretty intense focus on insane fights with heaps of weapons, massive locations around LA to explore, a bunch of characters to choose from, but most importantly, it has giant spider. So make sure to give it a look, and thank you to Epic Games for sponsoring this video. It's been nearly 10 years since this whole fiasco started. Identify as human. People have gone literally insane, running for their lives, destroying public transportation. And the firefighters? They're doing nothing to stop it. Airplanes now have a seat below economy. But worst of all, people are still using the word Selfie? But you know what? I think we can recover from this. Now who am I? Who am I? You really think in the apocalypse I'd be some energy drink drinking SoundCloud rapping devil's lettuce smoking princess Leia haired lion? No, I am Carla, psychopath extraordinaire. Like look at that, like killing zombies with a Nokia phone and everything. Well, my little zombie adventure started pretty much how you'd expect, with a free weapon. Okay, so clearly things have gotten a little bit out of hand, but as I popped my Flintstone vitamins, I was feeling right as rain. And that's when I realized something. This plane was no longer in the air. Well, fame waits for no one, so I made my way through this new hiking trail, and I saw the sights. I got a wreckage machete, practiced being a flight attendant, and finally found some living humans. Obviously, they were overdramatic, typical LA hosers, but then I found a less dramatic person trying to hide from us. Hey, hey. My. My. Wife. This man! This is the kind of guy that will be the savior of LA and would. Well, anyways, that loser's wife bit me pretty good, so I was gonna have to find some band aids or something. Only a good dollop of polysporin could save me at this point. And with that, I found myself trapped on one of the world's most famous islands, Los Angeles. Specifically, the island of Bel Air. So I did what any normal person would do in the case of waking up in the neighborhood of a bunch of incredibly rich snobs. I beat the living tire out of the locals. Obviously, I found great enjoyment out of that, so I decided the next logical step was to break into a house, steal a bunch of crap, and then eat a protein bar off of some dead guy. And then I discovered it. it. Voice integration. Truly the future of the future. Unfortunately, I had no idea how it worked, so I completely ignored it for now. And then I found a sword, which meant this was immediately a Skyrim clone. After using my Skyrim knowledge to kill zombies in LA, I decided my life was missing something vital. Alexa voice integration. And with that, my voice activated adventure had begun. Hey, you big stupid dumb idiots. Look over here. I'm having trouble here. Can you say that again? <laughs> tell the zombie they're stupid. Sorry, I'm not sure. Alexa, tell the zombie he's stupid. Oh, Alexa, shut up. I'm trying to talk to the zombies here. Sorry, I don't know that. I frickin' t Alexa, Alexa, tell me a joke. Right, it's not working. It's not working. Alexa, tell the zombie they're bad at the game! From fandom.com Zombie is a video game villain from an unspecified game found in Mr. What the frick does that mean? Alexa, give me my best weapon. According to an Alexa Answers contributor, an open hand beats rock every time. Well, after that critical success, I found myself at the richest person in LA's house, Emma Judd whose butler immediately pulled a gun on me just because I had a giant gaping zombie bite wound. Ew, is that? What, ew. This is actually very cool and badass. Why they wouldn't just trust me blindly was beyond me. what are you talking Give me the gun! No! Everybody started yelling and playing hot potato with a handgun, and frankly, all this excitement had me beat, so I decided to take a nap. But when I woke up, these sick Hollywood freaks had tied me to a treadmill for some kind of sick amusement. Say something. Hmm. No bullets in me. Yo, help me out here. I feel great. Regular old Carla. You do seem better. 
Luckily, I was able to convince Emma basically right away that I was immune, so she believed me entirely. And then, with my great brute strength, I escaped the handcuffs. Obviously, I was not one cut out for the rich life, so I met up with the butler guy at the front door who was just a big coward and demanded he release me out into the world at once. Let me at him. Are you sure? Turns out he actually forgot how to unlock doors, so I had to do that for him. And with the power of Alexa on my side, I was unstoppable! Hmm, I don't know that. My battle for Emma's driveway was nothing short of being on par with the 300. Except it was like 13 or something. And with the power invested in me through pipe wrenches, I managed to subdue every last pathetic zombie invading this yard. And at the end of the day, Emma was just Crazy Dave. And I was a plant. That was incredible! You guys should have seen me! And just when I thought this day couldn't get any better... It was Sam B! However, since things quickly turned into a dramatic reality TV show where everyone had histories and pasts... Don't touch her! Sam! Or call any time in the past 15 years since you popped out to the store. I think we should talk about this later. I decided to ditch those nerds, craft an electrified knife, rob their house of every last drop of aerosol, and headed back into LA to find the authorities to tell them I was immune because that always works out incredibly well. My first course of action was to stop an atrocious crime by drop kicking a looter. Evacuation center this way. But my actions angered the gods of LA. Regardless, I wouldn't let some measly earthquake stop me from beating up the authorities. But of course, when push comes to shove, I didn't want to exert either, so I resort to using an old caveman tactic passed on through the generations. Alexa, tell the zombies to get over here! Sorry, I don't know that one. And when my hunt was over, I gathered their wallets. Oh! It appears my trap is even great enough to ensnare me, of all people. Well, with that, I dropkicked another looter and stumbled across an old man's intercom. Hey, I'm here. Don't have a heart attack. Ha! <laughs> oh, good. Y you find that girl, you bring her around back. And we'll straighten this thing out. Turns out he lost his gal, so I made it my number one priority to- Gotta deliver the bad news. And she's dead. Well, I cleared out the rest of the old man's courtyard and then found out, hey, of course, the know, geezer needed my help. I need help. Uh, years of doing my own stunts means, well, the old hip won't survive this drop. I need to get my chairlift to get down. Now, if you can get things running, I can buzz you inside. So naturally, while he was stuck up there, I looted his gorgeous mansion. I decided to leave the house for a minute and get some air and actually get the power running. And there was only one way an electrician such as myself could restore the power. By pouring water over the zappy stuff. That's what I'm talking about. And well, it worked. So I knocked on the front door, waltzed on in, and then I not only got to witness a live action recreation of that stair scene from up, but I got to kill the old man's nephew. Well. Because everyone knows that in the apocalypse, no one has emotions anymore immediately. I then asked Alexa for guidance to my next mission. To send and receive messages, first register in your Alexa app. With that heading, I burst out back into LA and fought my way across Bel Air using nothing but the sheer brute force Carla has acquired from consuming over 30 zombie protein bars in less than an hour. After ransacking the neighborhood, I found someone trying to get into their locked house. So naturally, I beat the crap out of them. Turns out this was some kind of streamer's house. But they had the place locked down tight, so I had to do what was necessary to get in. Or what I thought was necessary. Anyways, I romped through the house murdering what I could only assume to be a bunch of content creators living the LA dream, destroyed all of their equipment, and found out the hard reality of what I actually sound like. You know, I was actually enjoying episode 100 of their podcast, but the ending was quite lame. Regardless, I was back on track to the hotel. And so I blitzed my way across the village of Bel Air and just down the street to find myself not only acquiring ninja stars, but stumbling upon the only location that currently mattered to me. The has-been Halperin Hotel. 
Well, it turns out the place was a dump. A literal one star piece of trash. They had no one cleaning up after the earthquake, and the place was salmon pink. Oh, and the staff was eating the custard. Evac's definitely over. As per usual, I proceeded forward by beating all the rest of the hotel goers with a crowbar to not only assert my dominance, but hopefully free up some of the better rooms. After putting them in their place, I decided to check out the amenities, specifically their world famous jello pool. Hijo de puta. Turns out someone peed in the jello pool. So I drop kicked this guy in. After gazing at my reflection in the wonder of the jello pool, someone started to blast music over the system, alerting every one of the jello pool's existence. And then I was forced into a classic hotel poolside beatdown. Where fortunately I was able to utilize the great power of my legs to drop kick every single person into the pool. Not only did I win, but the pool was all mine. So after all of that, I headed back into the building only to hear... So I figured out whoever that was, I needed to kill them in order to establish complete supremacy over the hotel. And establish complete supremacy I would all the way up those three floors of pathetic zombies using nothing but my wits about me. Which, unfortunately, I have quite a low IQ, meaning that it mostly consists of using meat mallets, pipe wrenches, and, well, just the pipe itself. And golf clubs. And throwing stars. There, there was a lot. I, I have a process. Well, I found whoever was on the intercom, stole her keys, tricked out a machete with an electrified thingy, and then MacGyvered this water to power an elevator. Finally arriving at my objective destination. A room. With a radio in it. That I spoke to a nerd over. What's up, Doc? Can you hear me? I hear you. I'm Dr. Reed. Well, I decided without any thought or consideration that these people absolutely want to help the world and not just experiment on me. But then, of course, the corpse brought. I discovered rather quickly that brides are invulnerable to golf clubs to the head, so I just started chucking stuff at it, hoping it'd do anything, and, well, it did. Turns out if you just slowly walk around a zombie, they cannot process the absolute tactic you are pulling off, rendering them completely harmless. Well, that's what you get for hogging all the cake. I waltzed right back out of the hotel, stole some guy's car battery, and threw it into the local duck pond, helping preserve the local wildlife. Sorry, I don't know that. Well, I found a real-life streamer who said streamer things. And then Hollywood was on fire, but that's okay, because I was just visiting. Well, I went back to Emma's place to convince them all to wander aimlessly with me out into the perfectly safe city. We gotta get going. We? What's this we? But for some reason, they were just all a bunch of non-immune cowards. Well, on my stampede out of the house to actually Michael, be useful, I ran into an old lady Michael? who told me that Butler Man was missing. Gone. Out there. Oh, perfect. A man like him, unable to That's figure awesome. out how a door key works, he wouldn't survive five seconds out there. Well, that wasn't my problem, so I went to my local street and threw corrosive acid on a bunch of guys. Now luckily, after that alerted the horde, I was able to hide in a truck. I was able to run really fast away from the problems I created. Now I found myself wandering into Beverly Hills, which was great, because rich people always have the best loot. Or so I thought, because it turns out all these rich snobs just carry around the exact same aerosol, fabric, fasteners, and scrap that all the pathetic poor people do. Regardless, I got attacked by a swarm of bees. So that sucked. After breaking and entering the butler's old house, I found one thing that made me think he was completely unstable. The fact that he owns nearly 10 copies of the same six movies! So, like any normal person, I burst into his bedroom and killed the zombie instantly. But he was just playing dead! The fool! Thought I wouldn't notice! Now, after snooping around his place and finding his exact location somehow, I booked it through some of the neighbor's yards, slapping some zombies along the way, and landed directly in one of the most sacred places in L.A. Bikini Man's house. Uh, sorry, zombie. Party's over. Now, there's a whole bunch of spares in the garage, but it's like full of riffraff. I can handle riffraff. Well, I wasn't about to say no to murdering another yard of zombies. And besides, this guy had a pool anyways. So naturally... Now of course, there was some stupid power cell to close this rich snob's back gate, and the zombies were pouring in there, so the only practical option 
was to light the whole place on fire. Now, I wanted to find out if Bikini Man was useful. Ugh, come on, guys. The evac already happened. Oh. Oh. But he wasn't, so I left. Luckily, I was able to check out this sick view of the ugliest city in the world. So anyways, I beat a bunch of zombies to a pulp, exploded this thing, which did literally nothing, and somehow managed to find myself in a movie studio. So I figured out why not rummage through all of the movie star's private quarters. Unfortunately, a bunch of zombies had the same idea, and so I had to ward off a massive horde of zombies trying to break into my truck. It was in this moment that I felt like a true Hollywood star. I fought my way into the studio itself, and then I fought everyone in the studio. And once that was over, I naturally found the universal power supply that everyone else uses to power their electric fences that also powers up an entire movie studio. Then I pushed a bunch of buttons way too early, springing every possible trap on literally no one. Less amazing. So I ended up hiding up in a building for like five minutes trying to stop these freaking losers from climbing up too. Now luckily, through the power of moving my legs in a very quick-like fashion, I efficiently got through the studio without any problems. Except for that guy. Finally, I had made it to the elevator room that would get me exactly where I needed to go. Whether or not that was to the roof or to the basement, I had no idea. There was literally only one button. But that didn't matter right now. I knew what I needed to do. I had to kill every single last one of the zombies storming into this room by any means necessary in order for the game's script to register the mission is completed so that the elevator opening prompt could fire off and I could escape. And that was exactly what I did. But it turns out the elevator was actually just a door. Regardless, I had just arrived at the real most famous place in LA, Giant Spider. If I got anybody from LA watching this video, just let everybody in the comments know that you know about Giant Spider. Oh, and I also found that butler guy. Who is definitely not bit and I'm sure will be totally fine as some giant green sack of pus decided to fight me right on cue lucky for me I have the power of breaker bars pipe bombs large explosive trucks and giant spider on my side so I was essentially unstoppable that was until all the running zombies jumped into the arena forcing me to book it around smashing random buttons hoping that things would just catch on fire and they did everyone did including myself Someone thick? No, no, well, not yet. It's not like insurance is worth anything these days. You don't want to get bit. Well, you don't need to worry about that, okay? Uh, I'll be fine. Man, Just I am so place. glad that this butler guy I'm is good. okay and will definitely remain that way. Sure. Well, after I realized that the giant spider wasn't actually real and that movies are just a bunch of fake things, I went back to where things are real. Beverly Hills. I met my guy Sam B trying to break into someone's house, so obviously I helped him break in. What's up, dudes? Or I pretended to, and then he had to actually do it. We found out that this house has just turned into a zoo for rich people's zombies, and at first it was cool. Not looking so hot today, Nikki. But then. Well, Ronnie was dead. So anyways, I started drop kicking and sledgehammering, and it was all around just a genuine good time. I mean, if this is what the zombie apocalypse was actually like, would it really be so bad? After that fiasco, I headed into the most $300,000 looking million dollar mansion I had ever seen, and found Sam B stuffing guns into his backpack. Which meant, I also got to loot guns. Or gun. Singular. I had to make a tough decision too. Do I take a semi-automatic rifle or a breaker bar? After much consideration, I took gun. How you like me now? And just in time too, because the moment I picked it up, it's like it triggered some sort of event that would require me to use said gun with a convenient case of unlimited ammo that will only stop being that once I killed enough zombies. And kill enough zombies I would do. They were just lining up on the yard again. And now I'm starting to find it ironic that like 80% of the zombie fights are just taking place in people's backyards. After I had fired off enough rounds to realize that guns will always be better than anything else in this entire game, I returned to Sam B who was stuffing a stocking with more guns. A classic Sam B move. Well, although that was fun, there was more fun to be had drop kicking zombies off cliff sides onto spiky plants that would immediately kill them. Or not, I guess. 
So I decided to finish the job myself, but I found out that I was allergic to the spiky plague. So I made my way peacefully back to Emma's place as to not draw a whole lot of attention to myself, as during the night, zombies become quite a bit more aggressive, so it would be unwise to pursue a path of noise. However, when I got back... Alright, you're all here. Oh, mierda. Michael. Michael, you lazy cow. You lied to me. Sadly, Emma was being annoying, so she kicked me out to the street, which was fine because that's where I thrive. Not only that, but in the sewers. I felt like a ninja turtle, but with a rifle. I managed to not only slaughter my way through the sewers, but also fix the city's weak plumbing infrastructure. That'll get everything moving. Los Angeles was saved. However, now there was just that second-rate priority zombie problem still needing to be dealt with. Fortunately, I had everything I could possibly need to handle a bunch of sewer zombies. Not to mention some guy just left enough highly explosive canisters and jerry cans around to sink half the city into the ground. Which I did. I did that. But after solving many, many problems with many large weapons, one of the most cliche things happened. I bumped into the classic sewer woman. I should have expected this. Hey, lady. Do I know you? Know me? More than you realize. I'm gonna have to help you let go. She was incredibly inconsiderate of my mission to do things and tossed me off the side of a bridge into a zombie-filled pit. However, here I found out that if I don't suppress my feelings towards ongoing life problems and affairs, I can become an unhinged psychopath. So that was pretty neat. After my little tantrum, I finally made my way out of the sewers as I had decided that things were way, way better above me. 